Okay, it is the trade deadline. And like I've mentioned in previous episodes, unfortunately, we're gonna have to blow things up a little bit here. Now, again, we are keeping the main core around, but some of these veteran guys who it just doesn't make sense to keep, we are going to move. Now, this is an example of a trade I'm not going to do. It does not make sense to trade Max Fried for Max Clark. Now, depending on how Clark is in real life, or I guess how he's playing out in the sim, maybe it would make sense, but I'm not gonna trade a guy in Freed to a fourth place team in the Detroit Tigers, even though I could, and even though these options are available. I'm going to try to center these trades a little bit around realism, like this one makes sense. A 24 year old starting pitcher with a potential in Drew Thorpe, who has been around, I believe, two organizations before. Um, and it makes sense because the Padres are right in the midst of a a wild card run right now um, and they're trying to compete in the NL West against the Dimebacks and the Dodgers it makes sense for them to go out and get Max Freed and we will get a potential pitcher in return someone who might be able to help us out right away I've given up on the Brandon Williamson experiment um, after doing well last season he came in this season and the majors didn't do well and is now pitching an ERA of about five and a half 5.5 um, over in AAA this might be the most unrealistic trade I make today. I'm trading for Arjun Namala over from the Toronto Blue Jays, the former first round pick. Namala is a shortstop. We'll see where he can play eventually. He's, he's 19 years old. He's not playing all that well in AAA. So that's kind of the, the little bit of realism I can try to you know integrate in this. I understand if this one doesn't make too much sense, but the Blue Jays are a contending team that needs bullpen arms. And that's why the move I think makes a little bit of sense. Okay, our next trade, TJ Antone, we talked about in the last episode. Antone's been around the organization for a while. But again, expiring deal. You probably want to move on from him right now. And we're going to look at some sort of trade to move on from him with. And we're looking at a couple. This one makes sense though, from the Cleveland Guardians. We get a 19 year old shortstop. I know we just got Namala, but we get Namala and that shortstop plus a closer. I like the move. Goodbye, TJ Antone. Chris Martin, Aroldis Chapman, two more bullpen arms. This is probably gonna be the weakest trade we make. Not many teams are willing to offer us much. I think Greg Bird, a pitcher from the Red Sox could make sense. The Orioles still make sense as well because we get a third baseman and that's what I'm going to do. Sending Chapman and Martin over to Baltimore in return for that one prospect. Next up, here's a big package deal. Sam Ball, Travis Darno, and Candy. I really like J. Mayer Candelario, but this trade is what we're going to do. We're gonna to try to trade this package away to get Candy out of town and just to again, make our farm system better. And this is gonna be the trade with the Los Angeles Dodgers. We get Jackson Ferris in the deal. Um, and it makes sense, 21 year old pitcher. Again, a lot of these pitching prospects are on the trade block. Not many teams willing to give us position players, but we will manage with it. I think we can flip these guys later if we need to. Orlando Arcia, again, was just traded to us from Baltimore midseason. We're gonna move on. He's gonna go probably here to one of these AL teams. Maybe we can get a deal from one of these National League teams and not gonna trade within the NL Central. Um, again, there are deals that make more sense than others. We're going to trade him to the White Sox. Now, the White Sox aren't contending. However, Arceus still has another year on his contract after this. So it gives the White Sox some motivation to try to go out and get him because they can build till next season. I'm not waiting to build around Orlando Arcia. The White Sox are. It makes sense. The Blue Jays will get Jock Peterson for three C potential prospects. Nothing much going on there. Just trying to move that contract and maybe give the Blue Jays another name that they could add to their playoff roster. On it to now looking at our active roster. Matthew Nelson's been in the organization for a while. He'll be the backup catcher for the rest of the season. Of course, we got two A potential guys in the farm system, but it is what it is. We're going to bring Nelson up. Xavier Isaac, it's time. He's the 10th ranked prospect in all of baseball. Isaac gets a shot this season at 72 overall. Lefty batter, we will see. Christian Encarnacion Strand for now will remain in AAA. Sal Stewart, gonna get a chance as well. He's not like brilliant anywhere, but still he's an all-around very good player, good defensive guy, 70 overall. Sal Stewart will now take over as the new starting third baseman of this team. And this is what this second half of the season is all about, giving these young guys opportunities. I decided with Stewart over Collier, I think it makes sense. And what do you want me to do with Nolvi Marte? I'm going to keep him around for the rest of the season. He's probably going to stay in AAA. We sent him down to AAA. He's batting 200. In the majors, he was batting 170 this season. I don't know what to do with the guy. He's likely a trade candidate in the offseason, along with Will Benson, who we just really couldn't figure out a deal for, as there he is on the screen right now. Benson sticks around and might as well bring up Austin Hendrick. The 2020 first overall pick for the Reds, I get that draft was kind of a crapshoot, but Austin Hendrick will get a shot now as a bench player. 
There's Xavier Isaac, the number 10 ranked prospect in all of baseball. We've got DeAndre Wilder, that closer we just got. He's in the 20s. Arjun Namala's 33. Rhett Lauder's 39. Kenneth Wilson, the catcher, is 41. Chase Petty in at 47. We've got um, Sal Stewart and Collier back to back. There's Jackson Ferris. We've got Ryan Fishman as well, the shortstop. Again, our farm system with Connor Phillips as well is really decent right now. I think we've got the best one in all of baseball. And it really just gives us options down the line. We don't have to, you know, go full rebuild and wait for all of these guys. We can also just move some of these guys in the offseason and just look to get big names on this team. So again, I decided for Drew Thorpe over Rhett Lauder and Kumar Rocker. Thorpe was pitching a lot better in AAA for the Padres organization. Um, again, you look at what he did over there. I'm just going to show it on the screen. 2.28 ERA compared to what we had with Rocker, 2.75. Lauder's struggling a little bit at AAA right now. Um, so it is what it is. We bring up some of these bullpen guys as well. We had Daniel Hudson in the organization. He will be one of the relief pitchers just because we need guys and we just need arms out this pen. Connor Overton will be there. Just in Brule. We just need a left-handed pitcher. He will be in the bullpen as well. Again, not many of these guys are going to be in the future plans, but it is what it is. We might strike gold with one of these guys and they can stay around for the long-term future of this team. That's kind of the goal with Xavier Isaac and Sal Stewart. Obviously, we're expecting big things out of Isaac, but for Sal Stewart, again, it's a chance to prove himself. If he can show out in these couple months that he's with the team, maybe he will make the opening day roster next year because I am more than anticipating this team to be a contender come opening day next year. And also, our first round pick, Luis Cortez, we finally signed him. This guy is going to be good. Mid 60s, right out of the draft, either high B or low A potential. He is going to be a force for us. Again, we've got a lot of starting pitching prospects, but don't worry, I'm going to move a couple of them in the offseason. Just waiting for them to develop, and then we'll move some of them either for, again, current stars we can play right now or for other prospects who, you know, more likely will be position players. So in today's episode, we're taking on the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Now, again, the Reds, for this 2025 season, it's a lost season, right? We're not making the playoffs. We're like 15 and a half games back. We are currently 59 and 70, taking on our opponents today in the 62 and 67 Angels. Now, the Angels, believe it or not, are actually only three and a half games back of the last AL wild card spot, but that's a whole other story. Again, we don't think, I mean, you know, no reasonable person would think we have a shot at the playoffs this season. So we are only going to do one more episode of the regular season this year. Um, we're going to have basically the final game. I think I think it's against the Marlins, if I'm not mistaken. I think we open the season and close the season with Miami. Um, I think that's the next episode. Well, I know the final game of the season, game 162 is going to be the final episode of this season because, again, we're just trying to expedite the process and we're just trying to get in to 2026 where this team, again, can try to compete. So here is your Reds lineup after that TJ Friedel ground out. It goes Friedel McLean Steer, Stevenson De La Cruz Ruiz, Isaac Stewart, Hendrick, again, a new look, seven through nine. Esturi Ruiz is kind of an everyday player at this point now. Same with Spencer Steer. I mean, he kind of already was, but now really Steer is going to be hitting against righties as well. And again, we're going to see what we can get out this team. Stuart Fairchild does play some too, but just today I want to show off Austin Hendrick, just because again, Hendrick has been a guy who's been in the organization for a while and really hasn't looked great in the minors, but we're finally giving him a shot because again, it's all or nothing at this point for him. As Drew Thorpe going to come in the game and strike out the leadoff man, Thorpe again has not pitched a major league game since I believe a September start with the San Diego Padres. He's currently got a five ERA, but again, only three starts in and he gets Mike Trout to ground out right there to Ellie De La Cruz. So Tyler Stevenson's been moved to the four spot. He draws that walk against Patrick Sandoval. Ellie De La Cruz on the one two was an all-star this season. He's kind of fallen back down to earth, only batting around 265. But it is what it is. Sandoval's really given the Reds trouble tonight with that off speed. Again, the changeup is nasty and he's got the curveballs as well as down goes Xavier Isaac. It'll be a tough matchup for him regardless lefty-lefty as Tyler O'Neill starts off the bottom of the second by taking Drew Thorpe deep. Deep left center field, it's out of here. Tyler O'Neill makes this a one nothing game for the Los Angeles Angels, his 20th of the regular season. Again, makes this one one to nothing as Mickey Moniak steps up into the box and that one should be tracked down by our speedy center fielder in Esturi Ruiz. But yeah, going back to our point again, 
Thorpe CRA will be high for now, but it's a learning curve again. We don't really care that much right now about team success. We're looking for individual success for the rest of the 2025 regular season. I just want these prospects to play well. Again, we're still keeping an eye out on Martin Valenzuela as right there, Sal Stewart is going to blast one in the right field. That ball, though, is just going to stay in the park to Mickey Moniak. There's Austin Hendrick. Again, he's nothing special. I just think, you know... If he's ever going to have a chance to play at the major league level, it's going to be right now because, again, we are going to reload next season, and I don't think Hendrick has a, has a place in this team. Again, Stewart and Isaac. Well, Isaac, I think, does have a certain place on this team. Stewart's fighting for one right now. Unfortunately for Hendrick, I think he's a guy who's kind of... We're giving him, you know, a chance, but really, I think Hendrick's a guy who's either just going to go back down the ladder to AAA or a guy who we do a service to and just, you know, send him off to another team where he could potentially play. So we'll see as right there is going to be a two out single for the Angels. Taylor Ward on the 1-1 one, one is going to hit one the opposite field. There is TJ Friedel to end the inning. So again, Thorpe only giving up one run through three. He's been solid so far. Matt McLean on the 1-2 one, pitch. We just got to get the guy some damn run support. I mean, we haven't even got a hit so far. McLean flies out into center field. And that might be the problem with this Reds team right now. No offense. Spencer Steer strikes out. Again, Stevenson was batting ninth for this team come opening day. Now he's in the cleanup spot as the Reds have been held without a hit through four innings. Again, Drew Thorpe doing all right on the hill. He's going to get that ground out of Mike Trout. There is Stewart to Isaac. One gone in the inning now for Tyler O'Neill On the 2-2 pitch, the former Cardinal and Boston Red Sox puts him on the ground right to Ellie De La Cruz. Two gone in the inning for Mickey Moniak on the 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Foul tipped in the glove on the circle change. We go to the fifth inning. Again, Cincinnati still looking for that first hit. A swing like that is not going to help by Ellie de la cruz here comes the former athletic in ruiz he's gonna wait on that one hit it into center but of course mike trout is going to be there and again i mentioned it earlier the angels despite being five games under 500 are currently fighting for a playoff berth as xavier isaac gets a hit on a bad matchup too he goes lefty lefty and sal stewart now gets on with the walk First and second, two outs. Austin Hendrick. Oh, man, just going to hit the fastball in the right field. Moniak is there as we now move on to the bottom of the fifth inning where Adam Duvall leads things off for Los Angeles. He's going to get popped out right to Ellie De La Cruz in the infield. And again, Thorpe, four and one third. He's given up one big shot. Again, it was the, the home run by Tyler O'Neill. He's going to get Ranjifo right there on the strikeout. Zach Neto going to fly out in the center as well. Five innings, one run given up. You can't really ask for a whole lot better than that. We just got to give the guy a chance to pick up a victory here. But unfortunately for us, again, we only have one hit, and it's in Xavier Isaac's single back up the middle. Friedel flies out into left field. Matt McLean now the batter on the 2-2 pitch, going to rip one. There you go. There's hit number two. And maybe Cincinnati's first extra base knock of the game. 83 speed by McLean, looking for second, throws offline. Matt McLean checks into the game with a one-out double. So, again, runner on second. Spencer Steer, huge spot. He's just late on the fastball. Steer is going to fly out into right. That'll be enough, though, definitely to tag McLean over to third. And we're going to need a hit right now to Tyler Stevenson. Out the four spot. Stevenson 2-2 two -two pitch. Perfect, perfect. Back up the middle. Stevenson ties this game up at one run. And Patrick Sandoval's day is done. In comes Andrew Wance. ERA of 2.87 so far this season. Ellie De La Cruz. Oh, with the runner on second. Stevenson advanced on a passed ball. Despite that, though, De La Cruz pops out to the catcher in Jan Gomes. Yeah, remember Gomes? He was in the big NLCS series last year. And now he's stuck with us playing in this random game against the Angels. Or I guess a random game here in Anaheim. But again, credit to the Angels. A win tonight would send them only three games back of the postseason. And again, they are 62-67. and 67. Right there is going to be a double play turn. Gomes' single is going to get voided because of the Isaac to De La Cruz. Back to Isaac, double play. And Taylor Ward is going to fly out into center field. You're not going to burn Ruiz deep on really anything with the fly ball. As we go into the top of the seventh, they're going to say Ruiz, though, swung on that one check to swing to no avail. Xavier Isaac walks. He's back on base again. He's got decent speed for a first baseman. Sal Stewart strikes out. Here comes Isaac. Yeah, the big man chugging along to pick up the stolen bag. Austin Hendrick, can he bring him in? Unfortunately, he can't. Hendrick's had two opportunities so far tonight to give, you know, the Reds a score. Really just driving a run um, is what I'm looking for. But unfortunately, he hasn't able, he's been able to pull that one off. Drew Thorpe will set Mike Trout down again. He's pitching with 101 here. He's going to lose Tyler O'Neill. 
We'll let him go a little bit deeper. Nothing to lose again with this season. Mickey Moniak on the one-two pitch. That one's going to be flown out in the left field. It will stay fair. Hendrick misses the baseball. Now it's a ground rule double. Oh, man. Unfortunate end to the night for Thorpe. In comes Andrew Moore, one of these guys we called up from AAA. And he will inherit runners on second and third, but he's going to get Adam Duvall swinging the fastball up and in. Can he set down Ranjifo on the one, two? He cannot. It gets past Sal Stewart at third base. It's going to drive in two runs, which unfortunately will be taxed on one Drew Thorpe. And it's a two-run lead for the Angels at 3-1. Neto now get a blast one deep in left field. Austin Hendrick. Oh, he makes that play, though. I mean, this is on Hendricks. I mean, seriously, he could have made it first and second if he could just field a fly ball. Instead, we're down by two. TJ Friedel, hard hit ball, but right to second base. One gone for Matt McClain, of course. Carlos Estevez in the game now pitching for the Angels. And McClain will be on with his second hit of the night. He'll be on with the infield single. Coming now to the dish, it's Spencer Steer on the 2-1 pitch. That's a ball. McClain trying to take second. He does. McLean's on with the stolen base. A hit will make this a one-run game. So let's see if we can get it here from Steer, who's 0 for 3. I don't think that's going to do it. No, that's not far at all in the center. Mike Trout has it. And it's going to be up to Tyler Stevenson again to drive in another run. 2-2 offering. Stevenson hits one hard on the ground, but straight to a body. There is the shortstop in Zach Neto to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Here comes Gregory Soto, 3.09 ERA. He was one of the guys I, you know, put an emphasis on keeping. I think Soto has a long-term future on this team. I think he does. The velo, the break on the sliders, you see right there. I think there truly is a future for him, and I think he can be the number one lefty out this pen. He's going to lose Taylor Ward right there by hitting him. That sinker just tails too much. And Mike Trout, okay, well, Mike Trout's going to do Mike Trout things. He doesn't stay hitless for long, even the one time I've seen Mike Trout in person, he actually went hitless. He went 0 for 4. That's despite that, though. Mike Trout hits his 30 second season, not hating on Trout at all. I just brought that random tidbit um again it's a 5-1 game mickey moniak gonna fly out into left field soto will give up two runs but again at the end of the day this season doesn't really matter all that much so we don't care about losing we are here for a learning process okay ellie de la cruz here is going to lead off the top of the ninth by flying out into left field the reds down to their final two outs by the way ben joyce the hard throwing righty is on the bump he's gonna walk ruiz though so you don't want to put that speed on the base pats ruiz will look to swipe second base here as that is a ball to xavier isaac and ruiz is in second safe so isaac now in the 3-1 pitch he's walked before he's gonna do it again he's on for the third time tonight first and second one out and now the angels officially go to their closer it will be jimmy herget 2.61 era on the season herget will see will benson first we're gonna go to the bench instead of sal stewart just because again the matchup we go double steal with the speed on the base pass benson hits one deep center field trout to the warning track oh he's gonna bring it back i mean it wasn't gonna get out but still a long fly ball instead of austin hendrick we're gonna go to joey Votto, who yes is still around Votto on the one two grounds one to first base and that is your ball game. The Reds will lose on the road here to the Angels and an important win for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim who have now cut the deficit in the AL wildcard race down to three. Yeah, this Angel squad is still in contention for the postseason. They are still playing for October, unlike the Cincinnati Reds. But again, it's fine. We've got one more episode here in 2025, and we are moving on to 2026 just like that. So we're going to give our final thoughts on the 2025 season, folks, tomorrow. Game 162 at home. I believe it's against the Miami Marlins. I could be mistaken, but I believe we're going to play the same team we started the season with. And again, we will reevaluate the team and then look to build on for the future in the off season so folks thank y'all for watching episode at number 33 of the cincinnati reds franchise mode here on mlb the show 24 if you have not yet though make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more make sure and make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video and give us thank you for watching and mamba forever